Today, I'm going to show you how I created this fall exterior render using real terrain data, photogrammetry assets, and the environmental chaos that sells realism. By the end of this video, you will see what makes your exterior renders look realistic. And stay tuned, because I'll let you know how you can get these same Lumen render effects for free. Let's start with references. As with every project, I start by gathering references. I'm using this Riverside house in Hudson Valley. I use PureRef to organize all my reference images. Notice the uneven terrain, scattered leaves, and how trees grow at different angles. This is what we are recreating. So the house is in Hudson Valley, New York, near a river. Instead of finding the exact location, I selected a similar area, copy the coordinates, and paste them into Lumion's OpenStreetMaps. OpenStreetMaps pulls in real terrain data, set the range to 500 meters, select both height maps and satellite imagery, and download. In seconds, you have real terrain inside Lumion. Now, just disable everything but satellite. Place the 3D model, go to Terrain Mode, and use the lower property to prevent clipping. Set basic colors first, no textures yet. This helps me see what works before committing to materials. Pause here to copy these settings. Next, composition. Setting up cameras now means we only detail what's visible in frame. Aspect ratio 3 by 2 horizontal, focal length 24 mm at 1.2 height. This gives a natural viewpoint and shows how the building sits on the slope. Then I add the two-point perspective effect. This makes all vertical lines parallel. I will store the camera position by clicking on the icon Store Camera. For the second camera, I will set it to 15 mm with the same aspect ratio, but I will click this icon to make it vertical, ideal for social media images. Let's organize with layers. The first layer I will call House. The second layer I'll name it Background. Add a circular tree backdrop to break the horizon line. Find this in Objects, Backdrops. I will now add a third layer called Bushes, and I will use the Line Placement tool for this. I already have a couple that I like for this project, and you can pause the video and copy the list from here to add to your own favorites. This tool allows me to set a large number of items along a path, which I can easily control the position and randomness properties. After setting up the bushes, I selected all assets inside this layer by double-clicking the layer and then clicking this arrow icon. Randomize size and rotation. Nothing in nature is identical. This breaks repetition. Next, I'll add a new layer called Background Trees. And I will add a set of trees that are quite light, resource-wise. They are mixed between ones that still hold leaves and others that are leafless already. Again, you can pause the video and copy them to add to your own favorites. Just scatter these assets around the house, like you have them on the photo reference. For fall colors, yellows, oranges, reds, browns, you could manually change each tree, but there's a faster way. First, add a ray tracing effect to have realistic lighting. Next, let's add a color correction effect and disable auto exposure. I want to control this myself and not have the camera always updating the brightness. Then add a real skies effect, which contains 360 degree images, also called HDRIs. I will select this one from the morning sky section. Adjust the light to have one side of the building in shadow and adjust the sky and background brightness. After doing so, head back to the color correction effect and adjust the exposure. Add a bit of contrast, increase the highlights and the shadows slightly. 
decreases saturation to about 90%. Lastly, on the LUT property, select the golden hour one and adjust the intensity. Now, just add the autumn effect. Select the second option for the yellow leaves and adjust the properties to have more variation. Here's the before and after. I also like to use the cluster placement tool to add more assets in a more controlled way while having that variation. I also like to place some trees strategically to give some interesting foreground shadows that highlight the building. Let's add story through the foreground. Search photogrammetry to find high quality scan trees. These scan assets have real imperfections exposed roots, bark texture, perfect for foreground where the camera sees every detail. I'm also using trees from 3D Sky, link below. Place them throughout, adjusting position and angle manually. You can see in the reference some trees are quite inclined, so let's do that on our project as well. Let's add the final materials. Set the ground soil for the terrain, a stone wall that I found on rearworld.com for the walls and bottom part of the house, and wood planks from Lumion Library for the house facade. I'm also using concrete material that I made it warmer by blending the color property with the texture. And an iron black metal material for the railings and window frames. I have softened the edges because Remember, nothing has razor-sharp 90-degree angles in real life. The reference shows a stone path and ground covered in dry leaves and scattered grass. I'll start with the stone path. I got this from SketchUp Warehouse and I'll just place them to make a path. I added higher poly leaves near the camera also from SketchUp Warehouse. The extra geometry creates ground shadows. Then use paint placement for dry leaves from Lumion Library. Select a few, adjust brush and density, enable conform to ground and just paint. It will quickly cover the ground. Next, let's add a couple of assets from Lumion Objects to help show that someone actually lives here. We can add a truck here, some sunbathing chairs by the pool, maybe some plants on the balcony, and a couple of curtains on the windows. Quick note, if you don't have Lumion yet, there's a free trial on their website. Students get Lumion Pro completely free. Links in the description. It's looking good, but real forests have chaos, branches, rocks, weeds scattered everywhere. So add tree stumps. They show trees were cleared for the house. Weeds around older stumps show time passing. I picked a couple of branches and again using the paint placement tool, I added a couple of them to the terrain. And I have done the same with small rocks, then selected all of them and made them smaller. I'm adding each element to a named layer. This makes it easy to hide or delete later. I will go now to the Weeds category on the Nature tab and select a couple of them to add to the scene, especially around the small stone path. The reference shows scattered grass throughout. You can find these assets in the Grass category and start placing a couple of them. You can press the F on your keyboard to place it along the terrain. Then just push them lower to fit better with the environment. Add decals, dirt, stains, moss, leakage. Nothing is perfect. Finally, foliage particles for falling leaves and birds in the sky for life. And if you want to dive deeper, I have a complete step-by-step -step Lumion course, link in the description. Now it's time to finalize our render effects. And remember, you should follow this step-by-step -step part, but you can also download the fall effect file 
from the description below. Lumin is helping me share this content with you, so you will find these files on their website. For atmosphere, add fog, increase density, adjust fall off, add warmer color and tweak brightness. Next, camera imperfections. Add bloom to blow out highlights slightly. Vignette darkens the edges, mimicking lens curvature. Chromatic aberration adds color fringing around the corners. And add sharpen at 10% for extra detail. On the ray tracing effect, add 128 samples as a minimum for exterior scenes with 8 bounces. Activate the noiser and firefly filter. Now let's render. I'll enable depth map and material ID. These are useful for post production masking. If you have a slow machine, use AI upscale. It renders up to 5 times faster. I'm also uploading to Lumion Cloud to keep my projects backed up. In Photoshop, I use Camera Raw Filter for color and level adjustments. Next, AI Upscaler for vegetation detail. Bring it back to Photoshop as a new layer, keep the best areas, then add 0.4 pixels Gaussian Blur. This helps break the super sharp effect that all digital 3D renders have. In real life, nothing is so sharp. Add camera grain. We are used to seeing camera imperfections. That's what makes it look real. And for a quick animation, use Kling AI. Here, I uploaded my render and give a basic prompt. The camera zooms in, birds flying in the sky, ground leaves slowly rustling in the wind. Now I select the duration and click to generate. Just wait one or two minutes and you will have a final animation. Want more Lumion tips? Check my video above. And if this helped you, hit like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.